it's the it's the screamo equivalent of uh, when the when the Bee Gees really realized uh, that he could do the high voice. That's what <laughs> happened to us. Screamo <laughs> night fever. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, screamo night fever. That's yeah, what exactly. I want. Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. Now Alexis on Fire are on the cover of the latest issue of the magazine, and I'm delighted to say we've got Wade on the line right now. How are you, man? Good, man. Just getting started here. Yeah, just getting just getting going. That's it's a good way to start it off, man. Get talking about music. That's always a good way to start it off. Um, and let's get right into it. Like I say, back on the cover because this new album is imminent at the time of recording. It is kind of on the way. It's coming very, very soon. Um, good place to start, I suppose, would be when the ideas for songs kind of first started coming together you know it feels like and again you say this in the magazine you guys it, it the fact that lockdown was happening really really helped sort of initiate this project in a lot of ways didn't it tell me about that initial initial steps in terms of the writing process yeah well we we started working on this when you know the world was completely shut down um and uh we didn't talk about getting together to write a new record we talked about getting together to just jam and uh Maybe that's how it kind of fell into place. You know, we we all got together. Um, we played, you know, it was, I think even that, it was, it was at a time when everything was so shut down, you know, I really wasn't seeing anybody. So just like being out of, you know, like being out of the house and being able to play music, do something you care about and, and see your friends, like that in itself felt like such a big deal. And then, um, you know, we ran through a few of the old songs and... Uh, and they felt real good. And and then, I don't know, it just like, just like super casually, it started, it started happening. And I think at that point, you know, I couldn't have told you what a new Alexa on Fire song would have sounded like. Um, I certainly didn't think, you know, I think maybe best case scenario, I thought that'd be maybe cool if we wrote a few, but I didn't think we'd ever come out with a new record. And, uh, and just kind of like, yeah, rehearsal by rehearsal, you know, we started practicing a few times a week and, and, uh, you know, after about a month, we, we had like maybe five or six tunes and, and kind of realized maybe this is where that's headed. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because of course, you know, it is the first album and I think, I think it's 13 years, right? The first kind of full length album in a long time, but you, of course, you have been active in that gap. You know, there has been, you know, I know you guys went away for a little bit, but there have been more recent live shows. There have been some singles here and there and stuff. Did it feel like, was there a pressure at all to kind of put together a full length in your head or did it really feel just kind of natural? Because it feels like everything since you've come back has been like, yeah, we'd like to do some shows. That feels like a natural fit. Oh, we might throw out a song here and there. That feels like a natural fit. How, how did it kind of feel to know that we're going to do a grander project this time? Yeah, I mean, it, it felt really good. And, and yeah, I mean, I think natural is a good word for it. We've tried to approach everything since we kind of came back and started playing together with just like, yeah, that feels good. Like, let's do that. Let's do a few more shows, let's do a few more festivals. Maybe we could try and put out some seven inches. And um, but that being said, you know, uh, like we have been back doing it and, and really enjoying it. And, and I and we didn't want it to feel like uh, like it was something that just was, you know, as as happy as I am about the past of this band and and feel good about like playing the old songs, like we don't want this to be some nostalgia trip. Like, you know, we, we don't want it to be like reminding people of like the way the band used to be um, because we feel like we feel like now is the best version of it. And so, so, so playing live, like, you know, it's, yeah, we don't want to like rest on nostalgia. Like we want to try and push the band. Like we want to be better live than we ever have. We want our shows to be better. We want, and I think the next like logical step for that is, is writing new music. And, and, you know, as you mentioned, you know, everyone's been active in, in, in the time since the band is, um, not been playing you know there's we've all you know kind of collectively in that in that time like you know between the between all of us we, we've probably released at least 10 records or, or maybe more you know with various other projects and 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 i'm happy to say i think that like doing all that led to this record being the record it is you know i don't think 
had we hit, had we like made, had we tried to make this record a few years after Old Crow's Young Cardinals, like it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been this. I think we wouldn't have been in like a, like personally in the spot to do it. I don't think we would have been just like musically in the right spot to do it because we've, we've like, we've all learned a lot. I think we've all grown a lot as musicians. And I think we've been able to bring all that stuff back to this project. And that's like really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to hear, man, because, you know, it, it, no one would have had a problem with the fact if you had, like you said, just gone, you know, we're going to play some shows, we're going to give you those songs that you all want to hear, we're going to give you that nostalgia hit. It would have been an understandable thing to do, but it's always really, really exciting when bands like yourself are like, you know what, let's push things forward, let's find a new way, let's find out what Alexis sounds like today in 2022, let's make that kind of conscious decision. And it seems to have paid off, and I mean, you even say yourself in this magazine interview, which again, I encourage people to go and check out, you feel this is the best record you've done right tell me a little bit more on that expand on that why do you feel like this is the best alexis on fire record today we've always been a very strange band we've always been a band that's like uh shouldn't work on paper five guys that are into five wildly different things that don't even look like they should be playing in the same band together but like there's something about our musical sensibilities and what happens when we write that just Number one sounds like Alexis, but you know I think the the stuff we've always liked, like you know when when we would tour, like back when the band was like you know like in the van all the time, and we were touring, like as much as we're part of like you know like a heavy music movement, like we'd always be in the van like listening to Tears for Fears or Sade or something like that, like you know. So it's like you know there's like heavy music is really important to all of us, you know, but, um, but like, we all have a very like broad musical taste. And I think, I think we've been making records like long enough now that we're actually able to try and we're, we're capable of, of writing things in that are like, that reference stuff like Tears for Fears, but are like, but are anchored in like, you know, like post hardcore or punk or like, you know, just as the, you know, the, the next single we're going to put out Sans Soleil, you know, it may have this kind of like pure disintegration, kind of like, like really fuzzed out my bloody Valentine feel, but like the vocal approach is like all like Sade. Like if you strip out like all the music, it's like the three of us singing like a three part harmony on like everything, you know? And um, that's, that's a huge difference this time around is I think, uh, there's always been a, a bit of a push and pull to uh, figure out because the three of us have such different voices, who sings what part, what's what, how do we do this in a way that's not like, you know, feels tired um, or obvious. And I think we, I think we've really like figured out the next step in the evolution of that is um, finding a way the three of us can sing together all the time. And that's pretty much what that rec this record is. So it doesn't have to rely on heavy, like this is a George song or this is more Dal heavy song or, or, or whatever. Um, the three of us are, are just singing together all the time. It's kind of like, uh, it's the, it's the screamo equivalent of uh, when the, when the Bee Gees really realized uh, that he could do the high voice. That's what <laughs> happened to us. Screamo Night Fever. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, right Screamo here. Night Fever. That's what I want. That's 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 on a t-shirt. I like that a lot. Um, it's funny though the way you say about you know the, the kind of different influences that flow through this because it almost feels like 2022 is the perfect time to put out a record like that. It's funny, you know. It's been it's almost a cliche now to talk about how genres dead and all that kind of stuff. And but yeah. it is true to say that maybe even 10 years ago heavy bands such as yourselves talking about those kind of references some people would have been like oh i don't know about that the freedom to actually just experiment in loads of different ways now i mean that's got to be such a lovely thing for you guys when you come back to make new music and know that yeah that is an acceptable thing and it's gonna work well because the landscape allows it a much bigger way now and i think um that's something we've really benefited from because of because of our music you know i think um you know, we, we really tried to stay away from kind of like, like hardcore cliches when we were starting the band, you know, like we don't have breakdowns. 
we don't have like a lot of those like things that have kind of not i'm not saying breakdowns are corny but like in the context of like early 2000s screamo they're pretty fucking corny um so like you know we really tried to just do our own thing and not kind of like rely too heavily when we were getting started on like what everyone else was doing you know we were part of that community but we we also weren't and you know and so in those early days when people would realize like we didn't have mosh parts we know we call it hardcore parking lot and everyone would just like eventually filter out of the show and wait in the parking lot till we were done playing so they could come in and watch the mosh bands i think ultimately that's those the fact that we stayed away from that type of stuff has made our older music not sound so trapped in time and and made it sound that you can actually it is 20 years later and and it's it's aged a lot better than our contemporaries i think that's fair i think that's a very fair comment and and like i say i think that's why this new record sounds so fresh as well it's that it's that thought process you know knowing you can bring in these new influences and want to push forward and let's get into some of that music now you know i want to touch on these tracks that people will have already heard by the time we're recording this um let's start with that first single so sweet dreams of otherness i mean for a start it's it's a title track but not obviously because the album itself is called otherness so i want to hear about that i want to hear about you know why you decided that phrase otherness should kind of sum up the collection as a whole but also just as a, a kind of launching of an era song it sets a mood very very well man it's the build into it for a start you know if you're going to hear a first single from a band for a long time to have this one kind of hit you in the face a little bit but in a really kind of dramatic almost yeah, scene setting is what I'm going to go with. It sets the scene very, very well. This. Tell me a little bit about that song, why you decided that should be the launch track, and, uh, and yeah, that title too. Well, you know, I think the the title really is is kind of what, what brought everything together. You know, we've got this collection of songs, we've got this collection of ideas, and and, um, and Dal brought in the, the lyrics for, for Sweet Dreams of Otherness, and, uh, and then also said, I don't know if he said... We should call it otherness, but bringing in that song is really kind of what I felt like tied the record together. You know, we had all these ideas and what's it going to look like? What's it going to sound like? And and just that word otherness, I feel like it describes the sound of this record. I feel like it describes the five of us in the band. I feel like it describes our fans. I feel like it describes this. The thing that I, I love the most about about, you know, heavy music is that it's like it's like the celebration of something that's 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 not for everyone the celebration of something that like makes a lot of people uncomfortable or is weird and is like if you give it a chance is actually quite beautiful and that really yeah i feel like it describes us it describes it describes everything we want this band to be and so that really kind of like that brought it all together and then um you know, I think it was it was it was cool to like start with this this tune, and I mean, uh, it feels like an Alexis tune to me, but it also feels like very feels different. It feels like us pushing into the next like territory of what the band is, which is something we've tried to do from record to record. And uh, you know, I think aside from that, just like it just goes really hard. So we wanted to put it out always always a good thing to have there a track that goes really hard let's get it out there for the fans man and similarly with the the other single that we've heard so far reverse the curse you know that is it's it's what you guys have always done so well yes it's a heavy song in a lot of places but it's driving it's really catchy man it's it's got those lovely little guitar solo breaks in there as well um yeah again just a little bit about writing that one because I, I do think that's a that's a great choice of single right there and a real standout moment on the album for me yeah, I mean, we, I think that one for us, um, like, I like the song, but I think I've been pleasantly surprised how much people are feeling it, you know. To me, that sounds the most, like, older Alexis. Um, like, in just, like, it's got kind of, it's got a lot of the stuff that I feel like makes up what's good about, like, the tunes we're writing during Crisis or something like that. Um, but it feels like a version of... Uh, um, of that like now uh so i think we wanted to follow up with with a song like that that was just like this is very much like this is like an alexis banger 
you know, and I think it's, you know, uh, we talk a lot about, you know, pushing the boundaries of what we do and stuff like that, but there is a thing that happens. The five of us get in a room, it sounds like a Lexus, right? So I think we wanted to, uh, to like, you know, like, yeah, put that out second and just like, you know, let people know we haven't fucking gone off the deep end either that there's just like, there's some still just some, some bangers on there. Yeah. Straight up bangers, man. It's going to sound absolutely huge live. That one as well. That's what I immediately thought of and leads me on very nicely to some of the live plans you guys have coming up. You know, you're going to be back over here in the UK in just a few weeks, man. It's coming up. It's going to come up quick. It's going to sneak up on all of us. Uh, but slam dunk festival, which is going to be really, really exciting, man. It's such a big event over here in the kind of scene and the rock calendar. I mean, you must be excited about not just playing live shows in general, but it seems like you guys always have a great time over here in the UK as well, right? Yeah, the UK is uh, has been great since like the first time we ever came over, um, and uh, it's I don't know. It, it feels like uh, I don't know. It was it was cool to see. You know, it's it's one of the first places that's like very far away from home, where people connected with the band. So to feel like you know to feel like you're very, very much in a different place and then have people showing your lyrics back at you, you know, it, it was, it's, it's an incredible feeling, you know? And, uh, and then, you know, over the years, like that's, that's grown and grown and we've had like these incredible experiences there of like being able to play some huge fests and then being able to, you know, to, to sell out Brixton was such a crazy, you know, experience the first time, like, you know, this, this venue, I've heard all these bands singing about for years. And then just to be able to come over and uh, like, you know, like sell out Alexander Palace, like that felt like the next crazy jump in, in the band there. And, you know, I was, it was a trip. I was like walking up to the venue and I saw like a double decker bus with like our name on it, like, like taking people to the show and man, I don't know. We got a lot of love for England and uh yeah, so it's great to be coming back on that fest. And uh, you know, there's a lot of great bands playing. And um, and uh, it should be good. I'm glad we get to, uh, I'm glad we're like, you know, like headlining our spot on it because we can, it means we can come over and do like a long enough show. Because that's the one thing about festivals sometimes, is, you know, it's like, you don't, you don't get to do the real thing. But so, you know, it's, I'm, I'm happy, like we'll be playing along, we'll playing a long set. It's going to be nice. Yeah, excited to see it, man. Especially, to, like I say, to hear these new tunes live because I think it's going to go down an absolute storm. Um, Wade, I appreciate your time, man, as ever. Like I say, please go and check out the new issue of Rock Sound with Alexis and Fire on the cover. Um, but yeah, we will see you in the UK in a couple of months, man. All the best to you till then. Amazing. Thanks so much, dude.